Eyes are really weird when you think about them. They're like little gel-filled sacks sticking out of our faces. They take all those wavelengths of light and somehow make pictures out of them. But how did they evolve to be like that? Hey Sears, Julia here for DNews. Eyes are extraordinarily complex, and the theory of evolution posits that such complexity arose from the process of natural selection over millions of years. But extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. So how did eyes evolve? Well, with each generation of offspring having slightly altered eyes with ever-increasing improvement, that gave them a decisive advantage over predators and peers. Back when life was just a bunch of cells in a soup, eyes probably got their start in bacteria over 600 million years ago. A random mutation gave some bacteria a collection of light-sensitive cells. These cells helped the bacteria know how bright sunlight was, and some bacteria who could sense this light moved away from it, which helped them since bright sunlight also carries harmful UV rays. After a few more random mutations, these little eye spots, as they're called, turned into a kind of early eye. Early eyes, if you can even call them that, were just a collection of cells with photoreceptors, with photosensitive cells with proteins called opsins. They lay on top of the photoreceptor and catch photons coming into the eye. They trigger a series of chemical reactions that causes the photoreceptor to send an electrical signal toward the brain. Their appearance in the tree of life can be traced back more than 580 million years. It can even be found in everything from jelly fish to insects to dogs and humans. One study published in the journal National Review of Neuroscience found that evidence like this strongly supports the notion that a common ancestor of sea squirts and vertebrates possessed many of the building blocks that are fundamental to light signaling in our own eyes. And we can see some of this process happening in the fossil record. We can find evidence in the fossils of trilobites, a marine arthropod that lived around 543 million years ago. As in most cases of evolution, the delicate balancing act, or should I say arms right? between predators and prey drove the evolution of the eye. So you're probably wondering how could we tell what their eyes looked like since eyes don't fossil all that well. And you're mostly right, except trilobites had a type of bacteria in their eyes that laid down a thin layer of minerals. And it's these traces that we can see, but only with super high-powered x-rays. According to a study published in the journal Science Reports, trilobite eyes looked like flowers. Under a lens, their sensory cells are shaped like petals surrounding a photoreceptor. While basic, these eyes served well enough for these bottom of the ocean dwellers. They worked so well, in fact, a relative of the trilobite, the horseshoe crab, still has them. As time wore on, the arms race drove the evolution of more and more complex eyes. Rather than looking for fossilized evidence, we can examine the eyes of modern animals that haven't changed all that much. Take a look at the tubularian worm. Their eyes are more like little cups lined with pigment cells. These cells are opaque and don't let light pass through, so they act as a way to direct light towards the photoreceptor cells. After a few more years of evolution, the eye cup becomes more of a chamber, and the opening narrows. This shape allows greater ability to tell where the light is coming from, and an early way to form images of shapes and things. This is called a pinhole eye, and can still be seen on primitive animals like the beautiful nautilus. Along the evolutionary way, animals evolved spines and skulls, and with it their eyes got more advanced. According to a study published in the journal Nature Reviews Neuroscience, researchers found we could trace our own complex eyes all the way back to early lamprey-like vertebrates who lived over 500 million years ago. Their eyes start to look more how we think of eyes. A lens forms from a thin layer of adapted epithelial cells covering the opening to keep out infection. They even have a retina and ocular muscles that allow for eye movement. These eyes would have been able to form a simple image over a broad range of wavelength. But there was a problem. These eyes evolved for living in water. Once our ancestors moved onto land, our eyes needed to evolve again. Around 430 million years ago, according to a study published in the Journal of Experimental Biology, tetrapod eyes took on a more elliptical shape to compensate for seeing in the air rather than the light distorting water. And the development of evolution even decides where eyes are located. For instance, prey like deer tend to have eyes on either side of their heads so they can keep a watchful eye out over a nearly 360 degree area for a predator. And predators like wolves tend to have eyes on their front of their heads so they have depth perception. All the better to hunt you with, my dear. So our eyes aren't perfect, and evolution isn't a perfect process, but as Charles Darwin said, from so simple a beginning, endless forms most beautiful and most wonderful have been and are being evolved. Hey guys, if you like the shirt I have on and want to check out other DNews shirts, be sure to go to the link down below. We have a ton of cool science shirts for your buying pleasure, and if you're a first-time buyer, use the promo code DNews for 10% off at checkout. Speaking of eyeball weirdness, ever look up at the sky and see those strange floaty bits? What the heck are they? Should I be worried about them? Trace has the whole scoop in this episode right here. 
So the floaters are pieces of protein or clusters of cells floating inside of your eye, suspended in that vitreous gel. What you're seeing isn't the piece itself, but actually a shadow of that piece on your retina. So eyeballs, how cool are they? Thumbs up this video if you think they're as rad as I do. Subscribe to this channel if you want more rad science. And as always, leave a comment down in the section below. Anything else you've wondered about, ask us down below and we might just answer it in a future episode.